So I'm getting a lot of emails asking about how does the Z-score tool work? What is this? How does it work? And what does it even mean? What does Z-score mean? What do these gray boxes mean? You know, what do the colored boxes mean? And just in general, what is this tool? So I wanted to make this video and it is long overdue. I'm sorry that I've had this out there so long and I've really not talked about it at all. If you've seen the prior Z-score video on the Crypto Wizards channel, this is just the upgraded tool for that. So that's the first thing I want to say. But in terms of, you know, how it works, what it means, etc., I want to demystify this for everyone because when I first learned about this type of trading, I was blown away by it. And I'm hoping that there'll be someone who's watching this video who sees this for the first time and gets that same like, wow, I never thought of that. So this is going to be quite an exciting video for me to make. And I think you'll find it very beneficial. So there's two prices we're looking at here right now. I'm looking at AXS and ZEC, right? So to USDT on, on both. And it's looking at the close price and it's looking at it over the last two weeks, 14 days. So since the 1st of December, right now we're on the 15th and it's looking at the one hourly price close, right? So it's looking at the, the price comparison of these. Now, other than the fact that these two cryptos are extremely strongly correlated, that's obvious. <laughs> you don't even need this correlation metric to tell you that. So this is correlation. It's looking at Pearson's correlation coefficient for those of you who are experts at maths and know maths much better than I do. That's what it's doing, right? It's correlation. And so these are 97% correlated. What, they, what that means is they move like each other 97% of the time over the last two weeks on an hourly basis. And you can change this to daily in different time frames and, you know, do a lot of exploration. But statistically, this is mathematics, right? Mathematically, they are correlated. Now, when it comes to pairs trading, correlation is not king, all right? Correlation does not mean that two prices are going to converge and that you can you can trade this pair. Now, what do I mean by that? What do I mean by trading a pair? Well, take a look at this, right? So we've got this AXS over here and, Z, and <laughs> ZEC over here, which I, I believe is Zcash or whatever it is. So you're, you're looking at, you know, these two pairs and, and what you might say is, well, okay, what I'm going to do is when the gap between them gets quite big, that's called the spread, right? If you take the difference between the two, when it gets quite big, like here, you can see they, they, they've widened, right? I'm going to buy this one and I'm going to short this one. And then what would happen here is your trade would kind of be in profit around here because you would have made money buying this and you would have lost money shorting this, but you would have made more in the buying than the shorting. So what you're doing is you're making money when these two prices converge. And this is like pairs trading. Now, statistical arbitrage goes a step further, right? It looks at this mathematically. And essentially what it's saying is, are these pairs, are these two assets, what are known as co-integrated? Co-integration and, and, sorry, co-integration and correlation are not the same thing. Co-integration is looking at almost like how these two assets cross one another. How does the spread move? It's like, it's like it's looking at these almost like an elastic band, right? It's saying that these prices, their behavior will cross. And you can look at what's called the mean reversion of that spread, right? So, so you're basically saying that there will be this, this divergence and convergence, this divergence and convergence. I want to give you an example actually here. I'm going to just open up another uh, Crypto Wizards instance over here. Now I'm going to run this for BTC to USDT, which is Bitcoin and Ethereum to USDT. And I'm going to run these not on the hourly, but the daily. And I'm going to run them since say December last year. Uh, let's go all the way back. First of December last year. Why not? Let's just run the daily prices and compare you know, statistically, how these two assets move with one another. And I'm just going to call them assets instead of cryptos, because this works for stocks too, by the way, you can go to general, you can run this on stocks against Bitcoin or stocks against stocks, it doesn't really matter. That strategy of trading that these have diverged, they should converge, 
would not have worked out well for you over like the last 11 months or so. Like it really wouldn't. The The prices of, even though they're kind of correlated, in fact, they're 62% correlated. They're kind of correlated, not really. But the, the prices have moved away quite a lot. So correlation is not, does not mean that they will cross again. It doesn't mean that there's an arbitrage opportunity. What you need is this co-integration. The co-integration is king. And for a pair to be co-integrated, the p-value, which is like a statistical measure of how much of the, the, the possibility of this is a fluke, needs to be less than 0 0.05. Here it's 0 0.01. So if it's less than 0 0.05, this will be green. The T value needs to be a lower number than the C value. T value is 4.10 negative, C value negative 3.35. Don't worry about what these are. It's okay. I don't even really know what T and C value are. I just know what the math should be, what the algorithm should be, and, and I've built it in for that. But the reality is that those are the metrics. The P value here is a very important one. And then if these line up, then yes, this is co-integrated. This will highlight in green. So not only are these two pairs highly correlated, but they're also highly co-integrated. Now, I didn't go and specially choose AXS or ZEC to make this video, by the way. I come to this tool all the time. I look at things and I'm always pleasantly surprised. And I'm like, wow, I had no idea there were two cryptos like, that behaved like that together. And you'll see all sorts of weird and wonderful behaviors happening in the market. It's quite interesting. It's quite interesting. But now let's take this a level further. Before I tell you about, you know, what these colors mean and what the gray boxes mean, etc., Let's take this a step further. Let's actually scroll down. Now you're seeing what's called the spread. So what is the spread? Well, if we go back to our Bitcoin to Ethereum example, you'll notice that the hedge ratio here is 16 over the last year. What this means, loosely speaking, very loosely speaking, is that on average, you would need 16 Ethereum to buy one Bitcoin. So when you're looking at the difference between the prices, you need to take into account the hedge ratio to calculate the spread, the difference. And that's what this is doing. It's basically looking at the hedge ratio and trying to normalize uh, the spread, or at least trying to work out what is a fair spread, right? In the spread, the spread, what you're looking for is a spread which oscillates. If a spread op oscillates, what that means is these are diverging, converging, diverging, converging, diverging, converging. Great, because every time they diverge, you can trade it. So how would you trade something like that? Well, what you would be doing is you would be going short on one asset and long on the other. When the prices converge, you make profit. When they diverge, if they diverge against you, you're losing money. But statistically, there's an arbitrage because if they, they diverge statistically more than they typically do, and this is what the z-score helps to, to calculate then you can trade on the idea that statistically speaking, these should converge again. And I should get, you know, X amount right versus X amount wrong, and I'm profitable. And so you could even build a bot that would trade this. You could build a bot that could go through all the margin coins on Binance. This is what this tool does, by the way. It's going through all the margin tradable coins on Binance that are tradable, that are open, that you should be able to short on. Now, a lot of the audience, again, are from the US, so maybe you, you couldn't use this, which is a good thing, which, by the way, I need to say, I'm just a nerd. I love trading algorithms. It's what I do. It's what I love. This is what I'm building crypto wizards for. I, I love it. I don't want you going and shorting cryptos, right? I'm not here, nor am I qualified to tell you to go and invest in shorting cryptos and going long on other cryptos. That's massively risky. Now, I also know that there's people out there that are professional traders who know exactly what they're doing. And I know that you guys take this information and you make it useful and you do something with it, right? I get it. Um, but for the vast majority of people watching this video, just be careful with this stuff, right? It's Crypto is hugely risky. It doesn't matter how you look at it. Even normal arbitrage is hugely risky. But what I like about this is that, you know, th there's enough liquidity to go around for most people, right? Just because one trader takes advantage of this doesn't mean the arbitrage is closed. It takes a, quite a lot of traders to close that order book in, right? It takes a lot of traders to get that price to converge again. So this is really, really useful, right? You could go short here, long here, and you'll see, bang, I've made profit, bang, I've made profit, bang, I've made profit, bang, I've made profit, right? Like all the time, 
this convergence and divergence is happening. And what's nice about this pair actually is not only is it co-integrated, but it's also correlated. What's cool about that is it means that it's kind of unlikely that you're going to get wild swings against you, right? Because they not only are they co-integrated, but they kind of move with each other. So you're taking, I would say here, small profits, but more often with less risk, which is, is great. And it's particularly great if the trading fees are low. Now, if you're trading this on Binance and you, you're paying uh, large amounts in fees, then probably it's not going to work for you taking small profits often because your trading fees are going to blow you out. They're going to blow up your account anyway. I'm going to do a whole video on that. I know that uh, one of you have asked for that in the comments. So I, I don't worry, I saw that. I am going to do that video. It's on my content plan of, of things I want to cover with you. So let's scroll down and look at the spread, right? So you'll see here the spread has increased massively when the prices. So look at the price difference, right? Spread, bang, increases. The prices converge again, boom, the spread goes down, right? The prices increase again, boom, the spread goes up, right? And you can see this change in spread happening all the time. So what we're doing here with the Z score is we are looking at the spread like it's an elastic band, right? I want you to see, I want you to see something here. Look at what happens. Uh, for example, here, the Z score is extremely high, right? Extremely high. Look at what happened to the spread. Right, it was very, very high. What what happened afterwards? Now bear in mind these aren't perfectly aligned. This spike is more like here. Right? It's aligned with this one. And you can see because these are in decimals, this is not in decimals. Right? So it's not perfect. This depends as well on the crypto. So you have to just bear in mind that this Z score here relates to this point here. Right? It's about one bar adjustment needed to visually align this. Right? What happened? Once the Z-score went really high, boom, it reverted. What happened here when the Z-score went high? Boom, it reverted. What happened here? Boom, it reverted only slightly, but then it reverted properly, right? So boom, here it happened again. Like it just keeps happening. I keep saying boom. <laughs> I apologize. Look at what happened here. Boom, it went really low, negative minus three. What happened? The spread closed. It went up this time, right? Boom, we're looking at the negative. Same thing, the spread went up. So you're trading that the, the spread is going to close. It's going to mean revert. And this is very predictable. I mean, look at this. I don't need to tell you what direction the price is going to go. I know I'm getting excited. I know I'm getting excited. But this is, this is math playing out in the financial markets for you. And it's showing you. It's, it's the most underrated tool out there because most people don't understand it for good reason. It's never been explained properly. But now I'm explaining it to you. Right, look at this. So here, boom, 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 boom. It's all here. The maths is here. Now, let me ask you the question. When you're trading, right, when you're trading and you're looking at MACD or RSI, would you rather be trading with that or would you rather be trading with a mathematical statistical edge? Welcome to Z-score. This is exciting, right? So this is what the Z-score is. Now, how is the Z-score calculated? Well, it's looking at the spread and it's saying, okay, this data point on the spread. So for example, let's take this crazy peak, right? We can see this crazy peak where we saw this huge change in price happen very rapidly. What happened in this crazy peak, right? We saw this big change. Well, okay. If I look at this data point on the spread and I compare it to on average, the average spread, right? Let's say in the last 20 instances, 20 hours or whatever's programmed in, right? And there is a, a unique setting put here uh, for this tool. I think it's something like a 20 rolling period or 20 window or whatever. Doesn't matter. Semantics, academics. The point is, it's looking at the current position versus its rolling average. And then it takes that difference. So it's saying how, how much has this diverged from its average, right? So you can think about this as how, how big has this movement been? How explosive has it been? And how many times does the standard deviation fit into that? So this is basically saying how crazy is the movement of this asset relative to itself? How this so check number one, these are co integrated, right? They should cross again, we know because mathematically, it's telling us they co integrated. Check number two, what's just happened with the spread? Has it gone crazy? Okay, good. 
The spread's gone crazy. Okay, that means we know, right? We know they should converge again. Check number three, how crazy? The z-score is like, here, it's a four. That means it's like four standard deviations. The standard deviation goes into this change, this rapid change, four times. Now, if you look at a bell curve, let's go to our good tool, uh, Excalidraw, by the way, which <laughs> here you can see I was drawing dimensions of some furniture for my girlfriend. Let's just move that to one side for a moment. But the, um, the point here is, let's look at a bell curve, right? So you've got a bell curve. That's a terrible bell curve. Anyway, let's put it on a chart, right? Here's a bell curve. If we look at this bell curve and we say this here is the, the average, right? This is the midpoint. 68% of the time, the price movement should be within this range, right? Here's the positive side, here's the negative side, right? 68% of the time. A standard deviation of four, this is like only like 3% or 5% or whatever of the time should that happen. So when you see, when you're seeing here on the z-score, this massive standard deviation, what that means is this elastic band has been pulled so much that it needs to collapse. And this, my friends, my dear wizard, presents us with a trading opportunity. And this is why I love this tool. Because what this means is that we can now capitalize on that. And the way we would have done that would be to go short here and long here. Now, when you exit the trade, it's up to you. And, you know, if you read Ernest P. Chan's book, or if you listen to my cousin Jacques, who again is an absolute genius, right? He's taught me more in two hours than I've learned in, in months and years on this stuff. He's the one who helped me improve this tool, by the way, and I'm definitely going to do an interview with him. Okay, so now let's just very quickly cover what do these gray boxes mean? Well, the gray boxes just mean that the z-score is within positive or negative two and a half standard deviations, right? So the elastic band is not being pulled that much. But it's useful because it tells you what kind of potential co-integrated pairs are there. The z-score might not be at a crazy place right now, but it still might be tradable. And also, you know, something big might happen in the future. So it gives you an idea of what the pairs are. The colored boxes are just the opposite. They're basically saying these are over two and a half standard deviations. So these are probably worth looking at right now. And the the z-score for this uh, tool is updated every hour on the hour. So it's worth looking on the hour if you're around. Just look at it on the hour. If you're looking at, you know, what's just happened now, are there any crazy z-score moves? Sometimes you see some explosive moves here. Like I, I, I just click on the tool. I just randomly check it sometimes. And there's like an explosive move. And I'm like, that is an awesome opportunity. So, you know, that's what this color coding and, and boxes are for. If you click on one of the boxes, all it does is it populates the tokens up here for you so that you can just click, you know, on the zap sign and, and run your, your arbitrage. So anyway, I think this is fantastic. I hope you find it useful as well. What's great about it is, you know, with Arbidex and TriScan, those are difficult because when someone sees an opportunity, they're gone. With Z-Score, there's more opportunity. More people can take part. I hope you found it useful and as always, take care and talk soon.